Welcome to Cindy's Library. This is Cindy, and today I am going to go over the items I have finished in April so far. First, I do want to apologize for missing last week. My sister at the last moment came into town, and so we had a lot of activities with her. But, on to the books. So, first, I finished Nemesis. By Agatha Christie. Yes, another Miss Marvel. Quite enjoyed it. So, uh, Miss Marple, she gets a letter from Mr. Raphael, who we met in. Uh, what is the name? Oh, Caribbean Mystery, of course. But in a Caribbean mystery, Raph, Mr. Raphael, he was not in the best of health. And at the beginning of Nemesis, Miss Marple gets a uh, notice that, I think she sees in the newspaper that he died, but then unexpectedly she gets a notice from his solicitors. Basically, uh, she will inherit gets 20,000 pounds or some such thing from him if she solves a mystery and sets something right. And so that is exactly what she does. She's at first given very, very few clues, but not no clues. And at certain intervals, she learns more and more. Uh, one of the things is she's invited to join this touring company houses and gardens of England and there's one particular spot that seems to be the focus of everything. I probably can't say much more than that except that at the end of Caribbean Mystery uh, Miss Marple calls herself Nemesis or is it Mr. Raphael? Either way and she calls herself Nemesis again, and oh, let's just say she just, on the one hand, she deserves the name, the Greek goddess of vengeance who makes things right. On the other hand, a bit incongruous that Nemesis is this little old lady with white fluffy hair wrapped in her pink scarf or shawl or whatever she knitted uh, a bit incongruous for that but wonderful i think this is the last uh internal chronologically miss marple book I also read Louisa Maid Alcott's The Inheritance for Alcott April. This was the group read. And what we have here, the story of Edith. She has been taken in by this family. She seems to be half English, half Italian. She was found as an orphan and not only had her father apparently died and her mother died, but the kind old man who took her in after her mother's death has died. And so the father of this family, he took pity on her and brought her back to be a companion for his own daughter. And maybe 10 years later, uh, everyone is growing up, not too much longer that the daughter will most likely be at home. She's starting to go out into society. Edith is more retiring, but into society, well, society will intrude on her whether she will or no. Some more positive, some more negative. And, well, let's just say in the end, she does discover her own inheritance. Also read, courting Miss Lancaster. Specifically, this is the 
the second of the Lancaster daughters and second child overall. This is Athena Lancaster. Uh, her older sister has married and the Duke of Kildare has therefore taken all the sisters under his wing, so to speak. And Athena is of age. In fact, probably the only reason why her older sister didn't marry sooner was because at the time they had no money and no prospects. So Athena's definitely ready to go out into society. A prospect which greatly excites her. So she's always dreamed of. Of course, her uh, brother-in-law, the Duke of Kelder, the terrible Duke, he's not happy about being in society. He is not happy about having to deal with a lot of suitors. So, to help things a bit, he uh, insists that Harry, his one and only friend, keeps an eye on things. Uh, drive away anyone that's clearly not suitable. Introduce Athena to people so he doesn't have to, etc. and so forth. Which, on the surface, is a pretty reasonable idea, except for the fact that Harry, well, he has his own feelings in the matter, which complicate everything in a wonderful way. Love a good Sarah Eden. Next, I read Sleeping Murder. I think this was the latest Miss Marvel released, but if I'm remembering correctly, I think this was the one that she wrote several decades earlier and had kept in a safe until her death, along with a Poirot story to be released on her death. But in this one, Sleeping Murder, we have newlywed young couple. Um, she grew up in New Zealand. They met there. I think he grew up in England, but... Uh, She's an orphan brought up by her mother's family in New Zealand. He is an orphan, had less, was less fortunate, but was fortunate in finding her and being able to provide for himself. And uh, she starts looking for a house and finds one and takes it because she absolutely loves it. The more she looks into it, the more she realizes she's been there before. And how could this be? And there are other potentially disturbing things, particularly uh, something she seems to be remembering. And if it is true, it means there once was a murder in this house. Well, Miss Marple, she happens to be in the area. And of course, uh, being tender of young love and being unable to dissuade either the new bride or the new groom to uh, not investigate. Well, let's just say Miss Marple, she gives them a hand as she is wont. Wonderful story again. I also finished Ivanhoe by Sir Walter Scott. Mostly audiobook, though some physical reading. This is a historical. It is a bit different than a lot of Sir Walter Scott's historical novels because it is very English instead of being Scottish. Uh, it is... I forget which crusade, but it is the time of Richard Lionheart and Prince John and Robin Hood. And into all these policies comes Ivanhoe, the son of one of the few noble Saxons families 
still remaining intact, though at odds with his father for supporting King Richard. And we also have uh, his father's ward, who he is in love with, but his father wants him to marry someone else, wants her to marry someone else. The last potential Saxon king of England. Um, oh, and we also have Isaac the Jew and his daughter Rebecca, who get tangled up in everything. Greatly enjoyed it. I read this a long time ago in high school. I remember rather enjoying it at the time, but perhaps nothing special. But this time, I enjoyed it more. And a lot of that has to do with how much I am recognizing from my early English studies, mainly in language, but we did plenty on history as well at the same time, which of course would be spilling over into 100 years or so after the Norman Conquest. So very fun. I also read the unselected journals of Emma M. Lyon by Beth Bauer, the first volume. I believe there's seven out now, and there's going to be a number of them. Very fun, though. Poor Emma. Uh, her father died. Her mother died. She was given into the guardianship of an aunt who didn't really spend anything onto her because all the financial side was supposed to be handled by her uncle. Uncle may be on the other side of the family. In fact, I think he is. But in any case, he has done very little, if anything, and she got Robbed of the education she wants, well, that's a bit unfair. They did give her some choices, and she made the best choice she had with the information she had, which sadly was not uh, sufficient. So she wants learning. She wants Latin and Greek and all things that a Victorian lady's not supposed to want. And she was also talked into being a companion and semi-caregiver of her very, very old great aunt, which she was miserable, but which she was assured she would be paid for. And her uncle's also supposed to be giving her an allowance. So she goes back to the family home where, well, she technically owns owns it and will have it by right uh, within uh, I guess well, I forget the exact timeline but within a year when she turns 21 and her uncle's not happy about this and she's been living there forever at the good graces of her father and but she is determined make a good life even if it is a bit unconventional so very fun so glad i started having fun with emma let's see i also read the four graces by d.e stevenson uh, it's in the middle of world war ii those in the countryside so she can afford to keep things lighter and uh, forget the exact title, whether it is Pastor or what. But Pastor Grace, he has four daughters. Youngest is in London, having a great time there, working with the WBA or whatever it is, something to do with the war. Um, the oldest daughter is working the land for the manor nearby. Two middle daughters take care of the house and of each other, they being not so strong. And of course, there's also tons of parish work. 
And of course, they are also all of eligible age. They live quite peacefully and happily together until one day an interfering aunt shows up on their doorstep and decides she is going to arrange their lives for them. And things go on from there. Ah, I did enjoy this one. So, not a bad reading month for April. Didn't get as much serious reading as I would have liked done, but I did finish Ivanhoe. I did read The Inheritance, and I did finish the last Miss Marvel books, and I have no regrets about that part. So, a good April so far, I would say. We'll have to see how the rest of April turns out. So, how's your April reading then? Are you doing Alcott April? And if so, what are you reading for that? Love to hear about it. Thank you so much for stopping by. Truly do appreciate it. So next, until next time, hope we all stay safe and healthy. And as always, happy reading.